So today, guys, we have a special guest. She's a good friend of ours. She's a great engineer. Please welcome... Darcy! Uh, hi, guys. I'm Darcy McIntosh. Uh, I'm a live engineer and producer. And I go to MI with uh, Vika and Elon. Woo! Woo! So today, we're going to talk about how to make great vibes in the studio to make yourself motivated and get into the feeling and into the vibe of making a great performance. Because the vibe that you're getting from your producer or the vibe that you're getting from your artist, this is the vibe that the song gonna be like. So like if you walk in and you're super sad, like you're not gonna sit there and record a really happy song. You're gonna, like, as a producer, you need to see that and adapt and just be like, you know, let's not do that song. Let's record a different song. So the first thing, <laughs> so the first thing that you wanna do as an artist or as a producer when you come into the studio is to know yourself, to know your strengths, your weaknesses, um, your vibes, your emotions that day. Yeah. You want to know your workflow and how to manage that to your benefit while you're recording in the studio. What I mean by that is that every artist or every producer that needs to work with an artist have a different, let's call it a workflow that he likes in the studio. As a producer, you kind of have to be like the coach of a team. So you have to figure out, okay, well, Vika, if I'm, if I tell her like, hey, you're a little bit flat, that may bring her to being like, oh man, I'm flat, whatever. But if you're like, hey, maybe if you raise your eyebrows a little bit, that could make you not sound as flat. That way, she has a way to counter, counter it, because it's it's about finding the way to get to the artist the best way. So like, Elon, if I yell at him in the studio. I know that's gonna motivate him. But if True I, yeah, for me, it's gonna ruin my whole mood. Exactly, I'm gonna... exactly. I can't have anyone crying in the studio unless you know it's the vibe that we're going for. <laughs> but it's just, it's just finding that level of comfort with each other, being like, this is what motivates me. This isn't what motivates me. Yeah, when you're working uh, for the first time with a producer, you should set those um, boundaries. How this, boundaries. Yeah, and, and uh, how do you want to work? And you should tell if you're an artist, you should tell your producer how you like to work and what makes you and keeps you motivated and if you're a producer you should just make sure that you know the artist and you see his body language and you you know what makes him uh, sing better and you know how to talk to him before you come into the studio to the production sway stage there's um, a stage it's called pre-production now the pre-production can be divided into two a technical side of how the session looks which we're gonna um, talk about in another video and the vibes uh, side to it, let's call it. Once we know the bullet points their like strengths that? and their weaknesses, yeah. it's easier to adapt and to work with them rather than work around them. Exactly. It would make your whole environment and vibes in the studio go better towards the song that you're recording. When I come to a studio, it's like coming to... Uh, it's usually the producer's place. It's usually not in my comfort, comfort zone. So I think for producer, it's very important to make the artist feel as comfortable as possible because he's coming to your zone, to your territory and he doesn't know anything, he never worked with you before and he needs to give the best out of the performance. So the next important thing that we need to talk about is the vision for the song, the album, whatever it may be. You need to kind of have an idea of what you want it to be and how it's going to make people feel. From a producer perspective, what is the first thing that you would go in advance to talk about how you want the studio session to go, how you want the vision to be? Uh, so you just have to, you have to know your artist and know like that's their best performance. Ah, uh, that's that could be better type yeah. thing. So I think it's a matter of just the artist having the vision and knowing what it is and being able to communicate what it is. Cool. So Darcy, how you make um, the best vibe that you can get out of the session? Uh, well, I think it's really important to know what the vision is, so if the vision is for a super duper happy song, you have to walk in there and like it doesn't matter what happened before you stepped in the studio. I don't care if you just got hit by a car. When you walk in the studio, you're like happy, you're excited, you're ready to go. But if it's a really sad song, you walk in and you're not necessarily unhappy, but you're more relaxed and reserved. So you're like, oh, like, hey, how are you? How are the kids? Whatever. And then being like, okay, let's record this. But you need to you need to be able to communicate. This is this is the this is what I should be feeling whenever the song is playing. So let's make that the vibe. Exactly. Right. 
I think that talking about it in advance so that the artist will know what he comes into the studio or even the artist himself, if he's by, in the session by himself, knows what is the vibe that it's gonna be in the studio for that day, for that song. So coming in advance in that mood is really helpful in the studio. Yeah, even I think even if you need the artist will take like a few minutes and go to a, to a walk and just think yeah. with himself and like remember something and just yeah. get and themselves like to themselves vibe in and mood. then go yeah. in a studio like ready yeah. 100% and yeah, you, you're completely right, like shit happens. You can go to a studio, you feel like shit, your boyfriend dump you, you fought with your mom, your sister is a bitch you, and you still need to make a great session. You, nobody cares about your problems, nobody. So when you go in inside a studio, you should just like open a blank page and just concentrate on the session and on the song. <laughs> but also like as a producer, if you can see that like your artist is obviously upset about something, you can't just be like, okay, whatever, we're recording the song. Like you can literally be like, no, like today's not the day. Let's come back in a week. I think that's important to be able to realize and say because if your artist is super upset, they're not going to give you their best performance. Right, but as an artist, it's always best to yeah. kind of know because again, studio is money and not always your producer will say, okay, never mind, let's just reschedule yeah. because it's very busy, it's very expensive and we should know how to deal with this stuff as an artist. We're all dealing with these problems every and each day. Yeah. Don't let it scare you, I mean, it's, that's life, that's that how it goes and it's good because this is what pushes us, us forwards mm -hmm. toward our goals and to be more professional. We take it from a motivation perspective and this is how things go. So to give an example of how we feel that the vibe should go in a studio and how to get great vibes, yeah. we're, gonna give you, we're gonna give you an example of a studio session that we all did together a couple of days ago. We recorded one of Vika's new original songs, it's called Biggity Biggity, it's a great song and I wish you all would hear it soon enough. And the whole vibe of the song was, it's a hip hop song, it's a heavy hip hop song, it's pretty heavy, it's pretty aggressive. And I know for a fact, because Vika and I are friends for a long time, that Vika likes um, a very happy and, and, and good mm -hmm. Um, environment yeah, and like, good vibes exactly. in the studio, even if the song if the song is aggressive. Yeah. So you need to find like that sweet that sweet spot between aggression and let's make now a great session from that, and to keep the great vibes and all of the happiness in the studio. Exactly, and it could be like you were you were the producer and I was the engineer, so exactly. it's more like you were the boss, being like, "This is what we need. This is when we need it by." And I was just kind of like, "Woo! You're so great! I love you!" <laughs> so it's it's finding that balance with everyone that's in the studio with you. <laughs> so, in that session, how as an artist, okay, I was the producer. Dusty was the Dusty was the engineer. You were the artist, as an artist. Really? How... <laughs> so, in that session, as an artist, how did you feel? Okay, so um, it was my first really like professional session with you guys, because mm -hmm. I usually record here in the studio by myself. And uh, in the beginning, I was uh, I was kind of nervous because uh, I never recorded with Darcy, and she never heard my hip hop skills and my rap. And I was kind of nervous because I was afraid that maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that maybe I would sound good and maybe she will like, you know, the fears that we usually have as an artist. And when I started recording and I, I was in my uh, booth and I was uh, doing my thing and I watched Darcy and I watched Elon and they're dancing, going crazy and telling me like, I love you Vika, you're awesome. And I was like, oh my God, I'm killing it. I'm killing it. And I got such a great mood and this was just, it was really fun because I know they were with me and they were, they were so supportive even when I like, made mistakes and fucked up. It's all good. Pika and I sat a day before the session and decided of how we want the vibe to go. Mm -hmm. And she told me that I could be uh, sometimes a little bit too formal and she doesn't like it, that, she, that it takes her creativity out. And the moment that we got into the studio, I understood the vibe from Vika. When Darcy came in, she understood immediately the vibe from both of us. The hierarchy when, uh, worked great. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is to make the artist feel as comfortable as comfortable as he can and keep it keep Perf the work 
keep the workflow and everything still professional. Oh, so I think another thing that you're talking about is like whenever you go into the studio, know your role. Like my role is to be the engineer. I'm there to hit play and I'm there to say, you know what, she's kind of flat. You know what, that wasn't the best take, let's do it again. But I don't go to the artist and I don't say that. Mm -hmm. That's my job to say to the producer, hey, you know what, I think I think we could do that better if they're kind of like on the fence as to if that's the take or not. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about communication between the producer, the engineer, and the artist. Darcy, tell us about the sandwich. Okay, so when it comes to talking to an artist, you have to, in the nicest way possible, give them a compliment sandwich. Because if I'm like, wow, you sound like crap, that's not going to motivate them to do no. anything. But if I go, hey, that's a great sound. It's going to motivate me. But, <laughs> but. Mo most people it won't motivate. So what you want to do is you want to say, say it's like a keyboard player. Uh, I really love that sound. I Can we do less of it? I, but I do really love that sound. So it's just, it's... Yeah, it's like making a compliment, making him feel good about himself, and then throw inside the mistake that he did, and then close it with, with the, another the compliment. compliment. That way, because if, if you're giving someone constructive criticism, it's not like, wow, you suck. It's, you don't suck, but this could be better. Okay, guys, so it's the, the end of our video, and it's time to wrap it up. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, <laughs> and comment what your favorite tip or part of the video was. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. We'll see you next Friday, 5 p.m. Woo! Woo! We, we were Music Music! music!